All right, Liam Farrell's with us here on the John Madola Show. We're talking Abington Heights tennis. Big week. You guys beat Scranton Prep. Let's talk about, you know, weather, fighting through the weather in March, getting through some of that rain, and then sometimes you get a couple matches in a row. But, you know, you feel like you're in a pretty good spot here in the middle of April. Yeah, so obviously the weather has not been the best, so you, best this year. Uh, I'm a pilot, so I actually fly, and I haven't been flying in a month because uh, the weather is horrible. Like, the weather, you know, the rain, the wind. And also for a tennis court, you know, you can't really play when it's too windy or it's too rainy because, you know, the courts, they can be messed up. Talk about nerves. I mean, tennis yeah. got to be nothing compared to flying. <laughs> Talk a little bit about, you know, do you have any nerves when you play tennis? Um, or a yeah. different kind of nervousness, maybe? I guess so. Um, obviously, when we faced off against prep, me and my uh, doubles partner, Mike, you know, we were pretty nervous because this is the best competition we were going to play this season. But... Um, we overcame the nerves and we performed. Let's talk a little bit about your tennis game, when it started and, and you know how serious you are about it. Yeah, so um, I grew up playing tennis alongside my sister Leela and my brother Dylan. We played clinics together and that, were, that was the thing that really made me love the game, playing with my family, which I love, and yeah. Let's talk about the best part of your tennis game right now where you're saying, hey, man, I'm really good at the net or your serves. I would say I'm pretty good at the net. That's where I, Finished points off. Uh, my partner Brady, he fit, uh, his his good serves. I just just poach the ball off. That's how most points go. How about you know you could get with a partner at some point in your life, whether it's your younger, or older, or whatever. Uh, and there's a little bit of negative energy. Talk about you know being able to communicate with that partner to kind of clear it, clean it up, or clear it up. Like hey guys, you know, or hey bud, we got, we got to yeah. fix this. So communication, like chemistry for a doubles partner. That, that's a key to success because, you know, if, if you have two really high-skilled players but you have no chemistry, it's not going to work there. So, like, obviously me um, and Brady or me and Mike, whoever I'm playing with, we have that great chemistry. We lift each other up, we support each other, and we motiv motivate each other. Let's talk about Coach Comstock, his approach to the game. What kind of coach is he? You know, we get barkers out there. We get positive people. We get people that yeah. kind of pull you to the side. Tell us a little bit about maybe a conversation or something he tells you to kind of put you in the right direction. Yeah, so Coach Comstock, he's a very wise man. Um, I trust him with my life, or I, tr I trust him on the court. Uh, he always gives me the best advice, and I usually use it, and it always works out. As far as, uh, you know, looking up to some of the other players or seeing what their game's about, you know, is there anybody you kind of look at on the team and be like, hey, man, I, I really like, you know, this guy's serve? Or... Yeah, so I always looked up to... Um, my partner or my teammate Dominic mm -hmm. um, he was also he's a highly skilled player but what I like most about him is he always motivates the team he always makes sure everyone's spirits are lifted up and that's really the key to the team let's talk about your family as far as support you get there and you know them you know being encouraging to you whether it's in the classroom or tennis or flying which will be another question yeah we'll so get to. <laughs> my parents they really push me hard in the classroom and they're all obviously very supportive my brother and sister, they always come to watch my games, which uh, I really love that they come up and show up. And um, yeah. Let's talk about the, get back to that flying thing. So talk about you know, flying, when yeah. it started, how you how you got involved. Yeah, it started uh, last year around, I'll say in October. Um, I really loved it when I first tried it. I tried like a intro flight. So I just went up with an instructor. He just flew around and that's what really got me into it. Right. It's not like you're going and putting five bucks down. Hey, take me in a plane. It's it's yeah. an expensive uh, hobby or something that you may want to do with your future. Uh, Talk a little bit about you know getting involved in that and just you know what are the big goals for you down the road? Yeah, so I think that's something I want to do as a career. You know, I really enjoy it so far, and it's going to be a lot of hard work, but I think at the end it will pay off. All right, let's talk about where you fly out of, what airport, who your instructors are. Like, Tell us a little more about your story there. Yeah, so I fly out of Valley Aviation. It's in Wyoming Valley in Wilkes-Barre. Uh, my instructor, his name is Joey. He's a great coach. Um, he always gives me the best advice, wisdom, yeah. How long before you know, you're kind of like flying the plane on your own? Like how many lessons before you get to that point? And is there an age limit like hey you can't do it before they like i i don't know anything about flying yeah. so so to fly solo you have to be 16 years old so in february i took my first first solo flight and um i plan well you have to be 17 to officially get your private pilot's license so i won't turn 17 until next december so i still have a long time ahead of me all right well uh 
you got an interesting story. You're doing great things there at Abington Heights. Good to hear it, and we wish you the best. Thank you.